Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I always love the Roundtable podcast. It's just, it's just great to see everyone's smiling face. And of course, Jeannie Morum is back. Jeannie, how are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you. It's so nice to have some estrogen on the round table. <laughs> I got a lot of it. <laughs> consistently. Exactly. So um, that's, yeah. So thank you so much for coming back. Um, I am not as excited to tell you that Eric Peterson <laughs> is back on the podcast. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> See, see how that Team Scott thing just continues. Hey, hey, Eric, don't don't worry. He he's saying that, but, but that's just his persona. He's got to yeah. say that because that's not really the truth. I mean, not I think maybe I shouldn't come next week if he doesn't want me here, right? I no, mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, oh, say, say, say. No, no, I'm not as excited. It's probably the most aggressive I'm I've ever excited. seen, Eric. <laughs> but that was the most aggressive I've ever seen, Eric, ever. That was like, yeah, that, wow. I'm 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 frightened. <laughs> Actually, you see how quickly Eric, he I, down. I will box you later a, a personal <laughs> apology. I'm so excited that you're on the podcast, and I'm so appreciative you come every week and provide the value, provide the wisdom. I'm just not as excited because Jeannie's new. Well, that makes That's sense. Fair. All right, but I'm really excited that Tate Litchfield, the big papa, is back on the round table. How are you, Tate? I am good, I can't complain. Dave, it's got a lot of uh, inspiring content to provide today. And then, of course, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike, the Zen Master Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. This is, uh, yeah, I'm doing great. Fantastic. Great, great. And of course, the always compassionate mini bat, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And Scott, should we throw out one more website just to confuse everybody? I mean, we could. Why don't, why don't we? What, what do you want to throw out? I was going to say TL Folio. TLfolio.com, sell your note. Sell your note, unlimited funds. Um, speaking of plugging sites, I want to tell you that today's podcast is sponsored by our generous donor, geekpay.io. <laughs> They're, uh, it's, you know, the only way to automate and have full transparency between a lender and borrower, your payments via ACH, ACH fails, charges a credit card on file, notifications are automated. It is amazing. It is actually, if you do it the right way, you charge your buyers a note setup fee. It is actually at note number two, a profit center a profit center. Get your first note for free. Go to landgeek.com forward slash geek pay. Um, Jeannie Morham brought up an interesting first topic. Jeannie, what should we talk about? The nightcap show with the land geek guys. Uh, really the nightcap boring. show with the land geek guys. So tell, tell us what about that show did you enjoy? Um, Mike's robe. I like the robe. You haven't seen oh, it. <laughs> it's Mike's robe. Woo woo. Mike's got woo. Oh, look at that. Mike in the his robe. robe. <laughs> in swivel. How long have you been robing it up? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, no, it's just a really relaxing um, you know, conversation between the two of them when I listen to it, Scott and Mike. Uh, just very casual. I like how they fed off of each other. I like the quotes. Um, it was really informative too. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think that's, that's where the anxiety comes in, right? Cause it's, it's not, what is it? Nine o'clock Eastern. You guys start 10, 10 Eastern. It's, so it's 10 Eastern, you know, they got the robe, they got the swivel, they've got their drink of choice in hand. Right. <laughs> and I, I can, and you can sense the anxiety between Mike and Scott in the sense, like we can't have too much fun at nightcap right. like we actually have to talk about something that people are going to get a value out of but then again we can't just be all value it's got to be fun uh -huh. and peterson do you think they do a nice job of of the balance or is it too much fun or too much information let's just pick apart nightcap <laughs> no i think i think they do a great job at uh at balancing content and fun um i've i've dropped by the the past couple of weeks and and listened in and uh you know i think that the content is definitely useful for our community. 
Yeah, absolutely. Tate, how about you? What's your take on nightcap? I love it. I think it's a lot of fun, actually. It's just, you know, it, it takes something that's daunting and makes it very relatable and personable. And I think what's interesting about it is so many people, when they start this business, are actually doing it at night. It's their nightcap, right? It's how they end their day or start their morning. So the timing of it couldn't be perfect. You can sit there, lick your envelopes, do your county research, and listen to uh, that wonderful Bostonian accent for a couple hours. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, you were a, a special guest on there a few weeks ago. What's yeah, in fact, up? it's not just that. I mean, like, I will watch it too, Mark. Like, I, I mean, they even, <laughs> they even called me out. They got me out. I was like a, a, a what do you call that? Like a creeper or a, not a creeper. Oh, like a, I knew a he was in the crowd. You were lurking. Lurking. I was lurking. Like, I was lurking and they baited me out with like, uh, <laughs> like, they're like, so, someone's like, hey, if Scott's watching, you know, then he's probably going to tell us to get back to work. And I bit on it and I'm like, get back to work. <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, they outed me. Dang. I knew he was in the crowd. I knew he did. It. Mike, Mike sensed it. He's like, he's like a Jedi. He sensed it. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to make every one of them live. Now the last week I missed it because we were on spring break, but usually I'm at my daughter's dance class while it's going on. And, um, and then she comes out of dance and she's like, who are those guys in the robes? <laughs> and, I, and I basically, it's like a teaching mode. I'm like, these are the guys you avoid, honey, as you get older. <laughs> and uh, she's like, okay, dad. Okay. I'm like, yeah. You see a drink, you see a robe. You got you to use your... Take that your, whiskey, slide it inside the inside of your jacket. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, you know, and, and Mike actually taught uh, me to teach the kids about... Uh, Cause they're talking about, you know, martial arts. He's like the best martial art is awareness. So I used it on you, Mike. It's all right. I'm here to help. Anyway, we love the nightcap. I mean, it was great having Scott on there. Uh, it was, uh, it's, we, you're right. We try to toe the line, fun and content. And I think we do a good job. We, we brought, well, and one of the themes we've been doing lately is bringing people on troubleshooting, you know, aspects of the business, not only celebrating their successes, but talking through some of their difficulties. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's been well received, I might say, you know, so we'll see how it can yeah, No, I, I love it. And I think it's another opportunity for people to, um, you know, kind of relax at night and get their questions answered by two lanky coaches as well in a fun sort of fun loving environment where you don't feel maybe as stressed as you might be maybe on during office hours or right. or, or just in the group right um so i i really love nightcap i think it was a, it was a, a great idea and um i think it's really beautifully balanced personally i'm not just saying that to kiss up I, I really, I really mean it. No, I appreciate that. We try, you know, it's uh, but it's, you know, I think Tate's right. There are a lot of people that, you know, this is the time of the night. I mean, cause it's, again, it's seven o'clock on the West coast, 10 o'clock on the East coast, anywhere in between. So people are, you know, doing things like licking envelopes or, you know, going through some scrubbing a list and it just gives them a little, you know, encouragement, a little relaxation. And, you know, we share some of the hard times, but how we got through them as well. So we can encourage others to do the same. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeannie Morum, what is some of the, uh, the best nugget of information you got at Nightcap? And what are you drinking with those guys while you're listening? <laughs> <laughs> a little Merlot? I probably, yeah, I do. I think I, I <laughs> low. I'm really kick back, relaxed. I love the quote on the Mike's, the fly and the horse tail. Is that right? Uh, I thought that was going to be the cover box book, but I'm, I'm yeah, not sure yeah. if I made it there. Yeah, and then the, <laughs> And the other quote by Scott was the, the long legs. You can still take steps. Even short people can take big steps. Yeah, even yes. short legs can take big steps. Yeah, he's, Scott's, Scott's a quote master himself, you know. Uh, so I, I still can't believe, Mark, that, that we, we've got people now making their own quotes and quoting themselves. I mean, like, <laughs> Scott Bossman comes up with this quote, and it's like, seriously? <laughs> a yeah, wise I mean, man once said. <laughs> Exactly. I, I think, and I think Eric Peterson and Tate would agree. This is what makes our community so special is that we can even quote ourselves. That's right. Uh, Tate? Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say you, everybody should go ahead and start doing that. Uh, you know, that's reserved for someone special like 
like Zeno, right? But, uh, <laughs> or, or Bossman. Or, yeah, definitely Bossman. You know, that's uh, – I call him the Boston Bossman. He's not from Boston, but he's the Boston boss, man. Yeah. He's got this good. funny accent, though. It throws me off all the time. <laughs> yeah, our community is <laughs> something else. Yeah. Eric Peterson, any last final words on Nightcap? No, I mean, I, I would just say that uh, if you haven't checked it out, it's definitely worth um, – taking a, a little bit of time one evening and, and checking it out. Um, in particular, if you can attend live, I think it's, it's a lot of fun. So. Yeah. And Mike, Mike, you, you advertise it in the mastermind group when you can go on live, right? When, when is it normally? Yeah. It's the Wednesday, or Thursday, my fire department schedule is 24 hour rotation. So uh, we'll have it out today. What night it's going to be. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We'll have it out today. It'll be announced. And uh, yeah, it's broadcast live in the mastermind group. And we love questions. So anybody wants to come on, ask questions. And uh, if you'd like to be a guest, let us know. We'll bring you on. Hey, well, I mean, Mark, here, here's a – yeah, go ahead, Tate. I've just been instructed by Mike to tell everybody that I love it. So. <laughs> I love Nightcap, everyone. I love it. It's my favorite uh, evening show. Can they see the text in the YouTube broadcast? I was thinking they probably can't, but they do. I just dime myself out. <laughs> Does that work, Mike? As uh, you gonna put the yes. check in the mail or what? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Should I hit you with an invoice for Venmo, or how? How are we gonna do this? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, where's Where's my payment, Mike? I'm like the original lurker here. You know, like yeah. I said, yeah, you're uh, cashing checks to. Take. I got him out by saying, "I know Scott Todd's probably in the middle of watching Jeopardy and answering every question because he reminds me of a guy that could do that, just like walk through Alex or back and be like, bang, 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 and we brought him out." So, yeah, yeah, it was. I couldn't resist it. I mean, look, if you're going to spend a, a Wednesday or a Thursday night watching like a Netflix show or a Hulu show, I'd rather watch Nightcap, right? It can help me build my wealth and entertain me, right? I mean. Watching any of those other shows are just hopefully going to entertain me. They typically don't. So Netflix and chill. No, Netflix don't, and chill. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to a more serious topic. Eric Peterson, what's going on with you? Yeah. So I was just, uh, I picked up the mail today and I received a, Notice of Chapter 7 bankruptcy notice from a, um, a guy that's in the process of purchasing land from me. Um, the gist of it is that um, it's a letter that goes out to all creditors, um, debtors, and trustees, um, and basically, more or less, it, it seems like it's saying, you know, uh, they're putting a stay on collecting any debts um, until further notice. And on the, the reverse side, it says, um, uh, it looks like July is, is the deadline for, for the stay of um, collections. But, um, you know, I've never seen one of these before, um, but I just, you know, I looked at it and I just kind of thought, well, I don't think that really applies to what we do. I mean, we're not a creditor. Um, you know, basically he's paying me um, every month by, you know, automatic draft from his checking account, but it's something that he's, he's signed off on. He's, you know, he's not, there's no mortgage or, you know, I'm not, um, there's not a deed of trust or anything involved. So there's, he's just making payments. If he stops making payments, I just keep the property. But um, I don't know. I just, something I never got before. So it was just interesting to, to bring up, I guess. Jeannie Warren, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I agree with Eric. I, I just don't think it's really an issue because if he doesn't pay, you get the property back. Tate, is there a flip side argument to this? Um, you know, it's never good to receive that kind of mail. I'm sure Eric was freaking out. That's the, that's the main bad side to it, I think, right? I've never seen it. So I don't have a ton of input on this one. Mike Zeno, you want to make a legal argument? 
Not really. I'm thinking if you don't pay, you don't pay. We're not going to go after you, and uh, you're just not going to have access to the land anymore. But I, yeah, that's a very interesting uh, question as to. And I should, clients. I should add that uh, he's current on his payments. He hasn't missed a payment yet. So, um, you know, my thought is I'm just going to keep Geek Pay active and uh, let it, you know, continue to to draft his account until he um, basically. Yeah. He may stop that. You. This may not be one of the ones. This, yeah, who knows? That's yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see, you know, like Scott Todd getting that notice and doing like a Tiger Woods fist bump, right? Like, yes, I've got another down payment coming, a new, a new note and extending it out, which I think is the attitude kind of have. But in this situation, could the argument be made that since you received this notice that they, that they're thinking, I don't need to make payments to Eric anymore and keep the property. Scott, is that what you think is going on? Well, what I, I don't think they, they think they can keep it. I think what happens is not, uh, lose the property. not lose the property. And because the, what they've done is they've declared him as a, as a creditor. And so because they filed for bankruptcy, he can't take the, he can't take anything away from them. Uh, now what he can do is, you know, he can make the case to them like, well, are you going to keep paying? You know, he, I would reach out to him and say, well, what, what's your intentions? You know, I got this letter. Are you going to continue making your payments? And, you know, if not, you know, what, what is your plan? Because I would start to tell them, listen, a uh, bankruptcy judge is not going to let you keep something that he's going to deem is, you know, kind of discretionary. And he's going to think that this land's discretionary. So essentially, you know, what I can do is I can give you a credit on what you've paid so far. And uh, I just need you to sign this release that uh, you're out of the deal. That's what I would do. Eric, what are your thoughts? What are you going to do? Um, you know, I literally just got this piece of mail uh, probably 30 minutes before our call. So I haven't kind of finished fully researching what I need to do at this point. Um, I guess my initial thought was to wait to see what happens with the next payment um, when it comes due. Um, but it may not be a bad idea to reach out to that um, that buyer too and just kind of see where he's at and... Um, what he thinks kind of, I mean, basically what Scott just said. Um, so he's, he's paid a decent amount on the property. Certainly not enough to, to give it to him, but um, you know, I think he's paid about a thousand dollars so far. Yeah. I mean, you know, a thousand dollars just to, to lose it. What's, what's the no payment every month? Oh, just over a hundred bucks. It's like, I don't know, maybe one twenty. Well, heck if he's not paying his mortgage anymore or any other bills, for any other pay credit, this thing off early. Hundred bucks, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, yeah. and he has no leverage with you because he doesn't even own the asset. Right, you own the asset. Um, that'll be interesting. We'll have to follow back up with you in the next few weeks and see what actually happens with this. Um, anything else before we move on to the next topic? No, no. Let's go on to the sick flip, Tate Litchfield. Tell us Alrighty. about it. <laughs> well, I wish I could say it was my own, but uh, I just got off the call. I was actually on a call with uh, one of my coaching students today, and mid-call, you know, he stands up and you know he's giving high five to his partner, and I'm like, what, "What's going on?" And they're like, "Look at this!" And they show me their uh, their cell phone, and they hold it up to the screen, and it's basically a wire transfer that just hit for eleven thousand three hundred dollars. So. After all said and done, they're going to make a ten thousand dollar profit on this deal, and I, obviously, I'm I'm stoked. I was so excited to know more about this deal that uh, we spent the next five or so minutes talking about it. But basically, they followed the method. They sent out offers. They got a property under contract. Now, due to the cost of the property, they needed to line up somebody ahead of time to buy it before they bought it, and uh, they called a couple of their. Um, their VIPs from their buyers list and said, Hey, here's what it is. You want first right of refusal? Here you go. Take a look at it. One of the guys responded to him yesterday and said, I'll take it. I'll send you a wire tomorrow when the bank opens. And you know, they thought, ah, hopefully this goes through, but you never know, right? It's, it's, you can't count it until it's there. And, uh, 
we were on a call and I said, tell me more about what's going on. And boom, it happened. And so they're going to make a nice, I don't even know what kind of ROI that is, but. Well, it's, 10, it's infinite if they're not yeah. using their own money. Yeah. So, I mean, it's on a dollars profit. They've got three or four more lined up exactly like this deal. And so in the next, I don't know, three to four weeks, I think they'll probably make another 40 grand in cash on quick flips. It's just insane. And I know what everybody's thinking. Hey, where, where was this? Uh, you know, my lips are sealed, uh, but uh, I'm pretty happy for them. It was, it was pretty amazing to see how quickly, you know, they could get something under contract, start marketing it, find another buyer for it. I mean, they don't even own it yet, but they've already been paid. The deeds have been sent out this morning. It's going through and everybody's going to win. So I'm pretty proud of them. It's pretty impressive. Jeannie Moore, what's your takeaway from that story? Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm just taking it all in. That's, that, that, that's exciting. I mean, what's I, crazy. Able to do that. I have not done that yet. So, and that's why I wanted to be on the podcast because as a new person, I kind of wanted to, to give a new person's perspective. And that is to um, sometimes maybe even ask, how, how can, you, can you break that down a little bit? Can you explain for somebody that's new how does that happen that, I don't know, I'm, I'm just impressed. It's hard to even put it into words because that's a lot of money in a very short period of time. It's a great question. I think it has to do with your county research, right? You've got to know ahead of time where you're buying and what people want. They spent a ton of time doing their homework. They figured out what the properties were going for on the high end who is buying these properties. They got in touch with the people that might want these properties, found a property and lined it up. So it's not like this happened overnight, but uh, what they did is they just connected the dots and it led to a $10,000 payday. So good on them, right? Yeah, Mike Zeno, what's your takeaway? Yeah, <clears throat> similar to what Tate said, this is like the end result of a lot of good preparation. Uh, you know, and like Tate was pointing out, county research, um, is like the backbone of our business, right? I mean, I was talking earlier to somebody, it's like, I met this guy years ago, this 90 year old former boxing champion. He's like, if I ever showed you how to box, I'd tie your arms up and make you do footwork for a year. And it's like, the whole point is that, you know, the fundamentals, the footwork of our business is county research. The footwork of our business is, is learning, you know, all the intricacies of where we're going to do the business. And, you know, once you do that, you line up that, and uh, you know, these kind of things can happen. But it comes as a result of, you know, really good uh, due diligence, some hard work, county research, and then you reap the benefit. Yeah, the, the transfer comes quickly over the phone, but there's a lot that precipitates that. And I think that's it's excellent. It's awesome. It just shows you what can be done when you research and take your time and find the right area. I mean, getting land really is not a difficult process getting the right land can be a little difficult right getting land is a numbers game but uh getting the right land that comes down to county research yeah and that's just what i love about flight school right because like the next april flight school is coming up and when you're in flight school scott breaks it down you know very very simply and then you do it in real time watching with your class and i think that's really the value of it versus you know, doing it on your own and, and sort of being alone with it and then like getting your mailings out, like, well, I, I hope this is right. You know what I mean? So if you want to start, you know, getting that foundation and those fundamentals in the, in the right place, I would schedule a call with Mike or Scott Bossman and just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and book a call and, and learn more about flight school. But uh, Scott Todd, would you say that's one of the most critical pieces of flight school? In the beginning? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that uh, the, the fact that somebody is there kind of, you know, telling you like, okay, we, we've got to do this now. It's time to, to move, you know, move your feet. Because look, Mark, I mean, you know, when, when you don't know how to do something, you, it becomes, you, you resist it, right? Like it's easier to go get your logo set up or your stationary as opposed to actually stepping forward and just going. And so, um, essentially I think what happens is a lot of times people just like freeze, they get stuck in their, in their way and they don't, they don't take steps forward. So in flight school, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, this is how you price it. You know, this is how you do it. 
and then boom, you go get the list. And then on one call, then we sit down in front of the computer while you're at your computer and I show you how to mail your offers through LG Pass, which is the system that we use. I show you how to mail your offers. I stay on the line with you live face to face until I see in the system your offers have gone out. And just that step alone right there separates the people in flight school from, I'm going to say 97% of all other people that want to be land investors or real estate investors for that matter, who never pull the trigger and take action. That's the beauty to me of flight school is that these people who are there are taking action. And like I'm looking right now at someone who responded saying, hey, I've gotten my first call back off of a letter. Well, you don't get your first call back unless you actually mail. And that's what we make sure you do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Eric Peterson, what's your biggest takeaway from, from Tate's sick flip story? I mean, I love it. I think, um, you know, I don't know um, if that student has been working in that county for a while, but I think that, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that can help someone be able to do that. Um, that kind of a deal is the more experience you have in an area, the better you're going to know the properties and, you know, who to sell them to and, and all those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's all just continuing to learn about, you know, the county you're working in and, and knowing all the ins and outs. Yeah. Scott, Todd, what's, what's your biggest takeaway from that? No, I think, I think it's really, I think what you're, what you're saying is accurate. Like, you know, it comes down to working in the county, staying in the county and looking for things and looking for deals and starting to know the, the prices. And then some of it is just luck, right? Like some of it's just luck because the weirdest thing is that, um, the, the weirdest thing is that uh, you'll come across these deals that just seem to be irresistible, right? Like, you know, I'm thinking like I, I bought a property the other day that was someone had, they countered me at $3,000. We were getting ready to agree to it. And then I found a flaw in the property and uh, we got it down to like $800. And today we sold that property that we bought for 800 for 7,500 on terms, right? So essentially it's just comes down to, to knowing your prices, being confident, and then maybe hanging out that higher price out there and just letting us see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. My, my takeaway from that story was the buyer's list. The buyer's list, that they actually worked their buyer's list. And Tate, you said something really important to me was they didn't email the buyer's list. They called somebody up and said, do you want to do this? Which I think oftentimes we, we ignore. But there's nothing wrong with calling a VIP buyer and saying, hey, I've got this. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. I mean, they took action. They, they wanted to sell this badly and you know, they were doing everything right. They were posting ads on Craigslist. They were preparing, you know, an email to go out to their buyer's list. And then I think it hit them like, Hey, we've got phone numbers here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and push it. Let's see who else can do it. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's very interesting. So they're, they're proactive and went at it hard. So, I take my hat off to him. Hey, Mark, can yeah. I add something? Sure. Um, I, I agree with what Scott was saying, and I, I have to say from a, a, a new person's perspective that you can really freeze just because you haven't done it before. And when I was posting an ad, I had to have, our mic was on the phone on, well, actually he was looking at my computer with me. And I, I think I froze. I had a hard time pushing that button. And, and Mike was saying, Jeannie, just do it. Push it, push it. And I, and I know that might sound extreme, but when you haven't done something, it really helps to have somebody there with you every step of the way and encouraging you because I, I did freeze, froze up, because it was new. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just had that same experience myself. Um, now, obviously it's not land investing because I've been doing it forever, but writing the book Dirt Rich, right? Like actually locking that manuscript with the publisher was miserable for me because I didn't want to do it. I'm like, Oh wait, there's no going back now. And, um, so I'd have to like box Eric, you know, is this okay? Or 
I'd box Danielle and she'd be like, no, no, it's good. She's good. So, but it, you do need that other person pushing you because left to our own devices, you know, our minds will come up with a million different reasons why this could be better. Or this isn't good enough or, you know, it's not going to work. Right. But then you've got the Zen master calming you down and saying, no, do it. And having all that experience and, and then you can actually, you know, execute with confidence. I think that's, I think that's different than just executing and then, you know, freaking out like, oh, wait, now why isn't, you know, anyone responding versus having that other person be like, well, no, you know, it's going to happen. Don't worry. And having some depth of experience behind them, you know, telling you, well, this is when I do this. This is how long it takes. This is typically what the, the, the process is going to be. And then you sleep a lot better at night. Would you agree, Jeannie? Yeah. And my heart would be racing. I'd almost have a panic attack. And Mike would just calm me down in his calm voice and say, it's going to be okay. I've done it before. I'm with you 100%. And I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I have appreciated the help because if I was left by myself, I would not be this far. And it's, it's true because I, you know, when you think about the past experiences you had in life and maybe they weren't successful and you failed, it's just, it can be difficult to take that step forward because your mind gets in the way. And Tate said something I thought was really powerful two weeks ago. He said, yeah, this, is a, this is a mind game. And I agree with this. I agree with that. It's, it's all about your attitude and your mental state, your mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I really agree with that. I think that um, I hear it all the time from, you know, people that um, have bought the toolkit and, you know, they didn't do anything more than that, um, whether it be uh, people I, I know or, um, you know, people I've met along the way. Um, it's so easy without any outside influence, without any community to kind of help back you up and, and keep you moving forward to, uh, to just let it go because you don't know what to do next or, you know, you're not certain that you've done, you know, this step right or, or, you know, you can't even figure out how to get your list or whatever it is. Um, there's so many aspects there that if you don't have kind of a group of core people that you can reach out to and, and kind of work together with it, it becomes very hard to, to get anywhere in the business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, what's interesting though, is that we actually have the antidote to that hard, which mm -hmm. leads us to the next subject, which is the two and a half day immersive boot camp training. So if you have the toolkit or you're in flight school or you're a one-on-one -on -one coaching client, you've got tickets to boot camp. The next one is in a few weeks just go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp if you haven't registered yet. But Tate Litchfield, bootcamp is amazing in, in the sense that, I mean, what, what's like the big takeaway for you in that training? You know, I always learned something. And I can remember the first bootcamp, uh, I don't know, Mark, how many, how many years ago was it? But to think about how the bootcamp has just gotten so much better. If you go to bootcamp, I guarantee that you'll leave knowing how to do this business. I mean, that's, that's how powerful boot camp actually is. And, you know, I love talking land for three days straight. It's kind of that, uh, it recharges my batteries, gets me excited, gets me motivated. And anybody who goes to it will leave feeling that way. This is where serious investors go to recharge their batteries. And, you know, it's in Vegas. So, I mean, how awesome is that? It's in my backyard. You guys, if you're debating on whether or not to go to boot camp, you got to come to this one. It's awesome. What should we do in Vegas, Tate? I mean, we should eat. What else are we going to do? We're the land, <laughs> we're the land foodies, right? We're going to eat. Yeah, That's what we're going to do. Land foodies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jeannie Moore, when you went to your first boot camp, what, did, did the land investing clouds clear up? Did everything dissipate for you? Yep. Is everything and, clear? And you know why? Because you went over the process over and over and over and then when you got sick of it you went over it again and over and over until you know we understood it and and then you know you added some new aspects you know like the L lg pass and some of the tools that we could add and autom automate the process 
But again, you always went back to the process and you stuck with the process and it didn't change. And it was, it really helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, I think is one of the great things about boot camp is, is when we actually take a break and, or we're in the networking uh, times and you get to talk to Mike Zeno. Right. And, and get to, you know, you get to ask that one-on-one question that you might not be able to ask. And just like Jeannie said, like all of a sudden, you know, you, all your anxiety kind of goes down just talking to Mike. And I think Eric Peterson sort of is the same uh, sort of vibe where you just kind of, you know, it's just kind of calm. Right. I mean, Eric, do people come up to you during the break, ask questions? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I drink so much caffeine. I want to talk to you just to calm down. <laughs> He's so mellow. So even keel. So even keel. The guitar. Guitar. <laughs> and then uh, for you, Scott, what's, uh, what's one, some of the, the things you love about boot camp right now? Man, how many have I been to? I don't even know how many I've been to. Uh, I, Mark, I think that the thing is, is that... Um, this is not like a one-time learn thing, right? Like this, I mean, you can learn this and you can go out in the world and you can execute on it or not execute on it. But essentially this is a market, right? Like the market is always evolving. And so there's always new uh, tricks. There's always new tips. There's always new things to learn, to think about, to challenge the way that you're doing things. And if you just get one little piece of nugget out of a conversation, maybe something that you didn't know, you could pay for the entire trip all on its own. You know, a great, a great example of that would be, um, you know, a few years ago, uh, we were in Orlando and um, we were talking about like, someone asked, well, how do you find uh, property owner associations, right? And uh, the tip came up, well, if you, you know, obviously you can look at the legal description and kind of Google that. And if it's the community, you can kind of Google that plus property owners association. But someone said, hey, go to the secretary of state and look for property owner associations with that legal description name, that community name. That one little thing, like just that one little tool, you know, made, made probably paid for the trip all alone because it just made me that much better. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I love the fact that you get so many different perspectives about how individuals who are in that room are actually running their businesses and the things that they're using and they're leveraging and, um, and the fact that they keep coming back to boot camps. Like I'm thinking Philip Ma or Bay, Mimi, Nine, right? It's, it reminds me of like these NBA stars that every day they go to a game, they do layups, right? They just are, are hammering in the fundamentals and then they're going to do the more advanced stuff. And of course the advanced VIP room with, you know, you guys uh, is incredible as well. Um, so yeah, if you haven't been to a bootcamp, I, I really recommend it, especially if you're uh, well, for anybody really, but even if you've been to seven of them, come to the eighth one. I mean, Tom Willis, uh, how many did he come to? And he's over, what is he? 12,000 a month now passive part-time. Um, and he always says, look, I, I keep coming to boot camps. So, you know, I, th- I think uh, you should do it. Anyways, again, go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp, which leads us to Mike Zeno, the Zen Masters tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, a quote, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? What? What Eric was on last week? How, how many times are you going to pick on Eric? Oh my god! I did, well, it's tip of the week for Mike. All right. Well, <laughs> Pete, is this unfair? No, it's not. It's totally fair. I mean, I, I, here, here, can I fill in for Mike? Can I just fill in for Mark? Mike, here it is. Ready? I got it. Here it is. <clears throat> Buddha says, "Watch <laughs> Nightcap every week." <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Leave it there. You, you need, you got, you got I have to... one. I, I listen. I can. They're, they're just. They're always right here. So it really is my turn. It's not a big deal. Is it really my turn? It really is your turn. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring a macrobiotic quote out. 
Did you ever hear of macrobiotics, Joe Sawa? The guy, uh, he's no longer alive, but it's a Japanese uh, form of, you can look it up, macrobiotics. It's a very real, Joe Sawa. Anyway. Okay. That's that. You can all look at that up. And some people out there we'll, we'll were like, "Wow, he's talking about George Sawa, macrobiotics." But his quote was always, "Eat your food and drink. Uh, eat, eat your drink and drink your food." Now that sounds a little like, all right, but this is the idea, and that goes down to the way you digest those things. But the reality to me is that there's difficult parts of our business, right? That sometimes you just have to, you know, you can get all caught up in this whole process of just going down the rabbit hole. Because, but sometimes the most difficult things you just have to attack and do what Scott Todd says: take action, right? Aim, you know, shoot first, aim later. Or done is better than perfect. And then there are sometimes the smaller pieces that we could overlook and take, uh, just take for granted. But maybe those should have some more in-depth analysis. So, there's different parts of our business, I think, you know, that this relates to. So there are some parts again that are initially difficult and you can have paralysis by over analysis and that could come out right away in the beginning when you're talking about building a list or mailing and you know I talk about you know aim you know uh, you know shoot first aim later Scott says uh, you know done is better than uh, perfect just get it done and you know and embrace the fact that if you take action there's going to be a result from that action that you can either improve or you can you can make it better right but if you do nothing how do you improve nothing Right. So you could sit there all day long and think about it and then, you know, and say, well, I'm going to do this, don't do that, but then not do anything. But if you take action right, wrong or indifferent, you can have, uh, you know, you can adjust it later on. So when I say Joe Josawa says, you know, uh, drink your food and eat your drink, it's like the same idea, right? You take something uh, that's really difficult. Don't overthink it. Just just make a step in that direction, you know, and then see what happens and adjust. And then some of the simpler things in the business, right? You know, maybe those is where you should take your time and, and really analyze those a little bit to see if you can improve them. So it's just a way to kind of look at things in contrast. So I have that. See, that's just right there. I love it. I love it. If you want more macrobiotic tips, <laughs> please schedule a call with Mike or Scott Bossman. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training uh, for sure. And then, you know, for everybody that goes on Nightcap, uh, these guys do a drawing for a free coaching session as well. So check out Nightcap. Um, Scott Todd, anything else? No, Mark. I think we're good. I thought that was like your your opening to to rip on. I know. I was waiting. I think he liked it. I really think I, he I liked think he it. Liked it. I think he. I mean, it Ari's going. What the sense. heck did he just say? <laughs> he he he. No, it, it's all good. There it is. <laughs> I, I saw Jeannie's eyes kind of glaze over for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, good, good no, tip. I, one of my favorite are the tips at the end of the, sh the program. I love them. They're great. All right, great. Too bad so, Philip Ma doesn't agree. I know. Philip was like, no, one tip. <laughs> but it does take the pressure off us every week as well. Oh, I'm loving it, man. Yeah, it's fun yeah. now. Even though I had to deliver one today I, for Mike, I had to cover for him. <laughs> I had to, he was stalling, he was lost. All right, there you go. I, I need a, a new book, by the way. Um, besides Dirt Rich, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned it. It's coming out. <laughs> um, anyone got a book for me? Nothing? Wow. No recommendations? All right, Tate, I'm going to read that book that you recommended a few boot camps ago. I still haven't read it. Look up Joe Josawa. Macrobiotics. Very philosophical. I can't even spell George Asawa. <laughs> Just saying, it's out there. I, I can barely spell macrobiotics. <laughs> You'll like that book, Mark. With, uh, right, that book. Shackleton. Ernest Shackleton. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. I'll, I'll get that. That's on the, uh, the to-do list. Well, I thought this was a really informative and fun roundtable podcast. I want to thank all the listeners for sticking with us. Please, please subscribe rate and review the podcast. It's the only way Ginny Morum is going to come back week after week. Please do us that favor. It really helps us. And if you want uh, the free $97 passive income launch kit, then just email support at thelandgeek.com a screenshot of your review. So leave us a review, send a screenshot, support landgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course. All right. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. One two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Awesome. Not bad. Could you play guitar when we do that, Eric? No. Oh, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so, so Tate, have you lined up the the restaurants for boot camp for us? Uh, I've got a couple options for us. Yeah, depends though. I mean, depends how much how far we're willing to drive. But I've got some ideas. We'll keep right, it safe well. one night and then uh, go out on a limb the next. I think. Uh oh, Scott's gonna be like, I think that night I'm gonna do room service. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, besides good. besides Indian, is there any other food you won't eat? About sushi. Uh, Are you a sushi guy, Scott? As long as it's cooked. It's got rice. <laughs> Are cowboy boots acceptable in uh, Vegas? This is Vegas, man. Home of the rodeo. Come on, Mike. I mean, Bring Mike. Cowboy can, hat. Mike, you can wear your bikini to dinner and nobody's going to think anything of it. I will. <laughs> <laughs> You'll wear the bikini or think something of it? I'm not so confused. No, I'm not saying I want to wear the bikini. <laughs> I would think something of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Eric, is there any, any genre of food you wouldn't eat? No, I don't think so. I'm pretty, I can usually find something wherever I end up. Yeah. We got a good Ethiopian restaurant here. Hmm? Jeannie, we got Ethiopian here. Cafe Lalibella. You ever had it? Uh -uh. I should try it. No, I don't. It's really good. Do you you like it? It's it's a lot of beans. It's spicy. Um, Okra. Rice. Is it by your place? Your house? Well, I get it at Whole Foods. Um, okay. I'll just bring it in. Mm. We got like kind of like this Ethiopian thing going on. I love it. Me too. Good. I, now my stomach doesn't like it the next day, but I love it. You know, the first day. I love Arizona. You can go and you can have a glass of wine or a cup of beer, a little bit of beer while you're shopping in the grocery stores. That's true. We can have happy hour in the grocery store. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've done that at Fry's, Genie. Yeah, I have too. Yeah. Whole Foods. Yeah. Yep. I saw all the gentlemen sitting there. Laura and I went there. They're all sitting there. Wives has been shopping. They're all sucking down their beers. Hey! I'm like, you guys are going to bah? They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Never seen them like yeah. it. It's good times. It's good times. All right, well, well, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Genie. Thank you. And, uh, see everyone next week. Thanks, guys. Good. Have a great week. Thanks. You too.